Wow. <laughs> Jeez. That is super flammable. Holy crap. Let's talk fire starters. Which ones are good? Which ones are not? Which ones are a waste of money? Which ones are really effective and inexpensive? Let's talk about that and we'll figure out which one of these might be your preferred fire starter for your kit. I would say a fan favorite of all the bushcrafters out there is gonna be just a regular old ferro rod like this big jumbo one right here. This one's a half inch by five, I believe it is, five or six. One of the big perks of a ferro rod like this is you can dunk it in the water and it can stay in there for a long time, basically forever, unless it's salt water, it'll corrode away really quickly if you do that, but, but it can be in water in a wet environment, in a wet pocket, whatever it is for a long time, you can take it out, shake the thing off, dry it off on your pant leg or whatever, and then it is going to be pretty much ready to go. Ferro rod is a pretty solid choice as long as you have a good quality tender. Natural or man-made, you have to have a good solid tender. You could also be creative with your striker. You can use everything from the back of a saw blade like this. As long as it's a good sharp 90 degree spine like it is on this uh, silky big boy. You can find sharp rocks, which is not as easy to do as some people would make you think it is. So most rocks are just going to be too brittle, not sharp enough, whatever it is to um, to get the job done. So it's not, not that easy. I would not guarantee that you could find some sort of rock in your area unless you're surrounded by obsidian and really good quality, nappable type rocks. This is a small piece of fat wood. Basically, it's resin impregnated wood from a pine tree. This came from a white pine tree and it was at a, in a stump that had not rotted. It had been sitting in the ground for a long, long, long time, many, many years, and did not rot because it was preserved by all of the pine resin in the wood itself. So this is a fantastic natural fire starter. If you've never messed around with fat wood or pitch wood or pitch pine or you know fat lighter, or whatever you want to call this, there's lots of different names for it out there, and everybody else thinks everybody else is calling it the wrong name, but the back of the knife is a really good scraper as long as it's sharp to a 90 degree spine. If you get yourself a small pile of shavings, that's probably enough right there. And that stuff, even a small little pile like that, which only took me you know, 10 seconds to scrape off of this tiny stick of fat wood, burns for quite a while. And the beauty of that is that you can use it to dry out any wet marginal kindling that you might have. Use the sharp part of your knife to get basically like toothpick size shavings kind of like this, and then add to that, put that in, in your, uh, your kindling pile and use that to ignite it. And it usually works really, really well. A really cool fire starter that I made not too long ago, and I was inspired by Bushcraft Kelso. He's the one that that gave me the idea. I'm not sure if he created this, this idea. I don't know for, for sure about that, but I definitely was inspired by him. So I made one of these and it is a fat wood handled ferro rod. It's basically just one of these big jumbo ferro rods crammed down inside of a chunk of fat wood that will last a really, really long time. I could make a lot of fires with something like this. Sure, it's big, heavy, and bulky, but I've got my ignition source and my fuel, my, um, my, my tender right here ready to go. If you want to see how I made this thing, I did a video on my channel, my personal channel, On3. You can look up uh, uh, Fatwood Fire Starter. I think that's the title of the video, and you can see how to make one of these for yourself. From Pure Fire Tactical, very cool fire starter. Again, big and bulky, but I like this one a lot because it comes with a tender source. And then in addition to that, you can fill the handle with tender as well, like these fire plugs from Wazoo, or Vaseline and cotton balls, or whatever you want to do. So... So I really, really like this big fire starter. It is kind of a chunk. It's a big, heavy, clunky thing, but it, I mean, it really gets the job done and it works really, really well. That, that sparks really, really well. Some fair, not all ferro rods are created equal. Some are better than others. This one on the Pure Fire Tactical Fire Starter sparks really, really well very, without, without a whole lot of effort. And then on the back of it is this magnesium bar. 
Again, you can use, oh, that's a horrible sound, I hate that. You can use the back of your knife or the edge of your knife, just understand that's gonna mess it up, to scrape off some shavings of this magnesium. Get yourself a healthy pile of the magnesium going. That's just a tiny little pile, obviously, but it bur burns really, really hot. You'd want more than that to get your fire started, but I think you guys get the idea. Let's talk about the Bic lighter. This is probably my preferred source of ignition. My, it's what I keep in my pocket every single day because they just work, you know. Say what you want about lighters. Everybody says, oh, you know, but they'll run out of fuel and all this stuff, and if they get wet, nonsense. It takes a long time for these things to run out of fuel unless the button is held down for whatever reason in your pocket or pack or something. And uh, even if they get wet, you can dry them out fairly effectively and fairly quickly, uh, even if you just drop them in the water. So I highly recommend the Bic lighter. They just get the job done. Um, always remove the child safety nonsense. We don't put safety first around here. We put usability first. So if you want your kid, if you put something like this in your kid's backpack and you want them to be able to start a fire in an emergency, they need to be able to do it effectively, even with their small little cold, uh, you know, numb hands. So get rid of that child safety mechanism right there with just a pair of pliers. It works really, really good. Wrapping a rubber band around here will keep it from getting depressed and the fuel running out. Generally what I do is I give my lighters a good shake and I listen to them to see if they've still got plenty of fuel in them. And that's just kind of a check before I, before I get going with them. Um, and then a next step is making some sort of fire kit out of a Bic lighter. So we've got a couple of Ranger bands, which are basically just some cut inner tubes, bicycle inner tubes, which are flammable. If you take one of these off, and this one is keeping the button from being depressed. I can't push that button down as easily. I can push it down, but it's, it's a little bit tougher. But if I take this thing off, I can use this as a flame extender so I don't waste all of the fuel in my lighter. I can ignite this ranger band like that, and these burn for a long, long time, and that will help dry out any wet kindling that I might have. With another ranger band, we've got just a fire plug right here attached to the lighter itself, and then that's on a lanyard, and the lanyard is secured with a little bit of electrical tape, which is also flammable. This is what I keep in my pocket every single day. This is an Exotec fire sleeve. The silicone stickiness of it keeps it in your pocket. It won't slip out, you won't lose it. It keeps it completely watertight. It won't get wet. Even though you can dry them out, it's kind of a pain in the neck sometimes. So, so this will keep it dry even if you were to drop it in the drink. And they also float, I do believe, although I haven't tested that. I'm pretty sure, uh, leave that in the comments if these things do float, I'm pretty sure they do. That'll keep it dry. It'll also keep this from being protected and keep it from being depressed in your pocket or your pants. If for some reason you wanted to keep your lighter lit for a longer period of time without having to hold it, this little part of the sleeve holds the um, holds the fuel down, the, the, the button down, so you can keep that going. I don't know why you'd ever really need that. I've never I've never used that feature, but but it's there if you should if you should want it. It's a significantly bigger footprint in your pocket, so I don't like that. But otherwise. It's, it's a win. I really, really like the Exotec Fire Sleeve. This product in this little tin here is called Pyro Putty. Not bad, pretty decent fire starter. They make different kinds for different uh, temperature ratings. So if it's hot outside, it doesn't melt all over the place. And if it's cold outside, it, um, it will still be able to be pliable. I think this is the winter one. This is the one that will still work even below freezing temperatures. Um, pretty good stuff. It works really well. It lights up really well. It burns for a long time. It's not as waterproof as they said that it was in their advertising. Well, let's test it right now. Let's find out if this stuff is as waterproof as they say. They say it's 100% waterproof on the packaging. I'll dunk it in my water. And then without trying to dry it off at all, it will not burn. So it's not 100% waterproof, that's not true. But I think what we could do is maybe squish some of the water out of it, kind of like that. Squeeze the water out and then perhaps pull it apart again and see if that works. Yeah. It's kind of gets kind of nasty after you get it wet. Well, let's see if we can light that. Mm. It's trying. 
I don't think you'd be able to light that with a ferro rod. I think even with a lighter, it's pretty difficult after getting it wet and squeezing the water out of it. Let's break it up a little, make it a little smaller. Yeah. There we go. So that took quite a bit of motivation to get the water out and get it relit. So pyro putty is good as long as you keep it dry. If you keep it in this little tin, it'll probably stay really good and dry. And it burns for a long time, and that that's a win. So it's pretty effective on, on that front. Vaseline and cotton balls. You just take a little bit of petroleum jelly, Vaseline, and you mix it in with a cotton ball. You massage it into the fibers. And it works really, really good, and you just keep it in a Ziploc bag such as this one. Open her up. Pull yourself out one of those cotton balls that looks like this. And then you just tear off, or not even tear it off, you just pull it apart kind of like that. You don't have to do much work to it. You just kind of thin it out. There we go. So that lights up really, really easy, even with a tiny little spark, which I think is a win. We'll dunk it in, just like we did the pirate putty. Stick it in there a couple times. Shake it off. Pull it apart. I'm not even going to try to get the water out of it. I'm just going to pull it apart like that. And let's see if it will take a spark. I think it will from the ferro rod. I like these small little ferro rods and strikers, that, especially like this one from Wazoo because it's an it's an actual little ceramic blade too. And it strikes, it's very sharp. That thing is like a scalpel. It works really, really good. And it strikes sparks off of a ferro rod really well, probably better than any other striker that I've used, um, despite its tiny little size. It works really well. But as you know, like anything, if, if they're tiny and little, it's going to be difficult to use sometimes. So it takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of finesse to be able to use these things. Um, and if you've got cold, numb hands, it makes it even more difficult. So you got to be you got to practice with these and be, become very efficient with them. But let's see if it'll strike. Vaseline and cotton balls after being dipped in the water, I think is more effective than the pyro putty. So as far as a homemade fire starter, it's hard to beat Vaseline and cotton balls. I think that they're, as far as cost and effectiveness, you can make a huge, I mean, this was, I think a hundred, this was a hundred cotton balls in there. Uh, I mean, you could make a hundred of these things for pennies. I mean, no money whatsoever. I think I bought this from each of these from the dollar store, a dollar for this and a dollar for this, and you are good to go. The striker ceramic folder here, super handy as a backup fire starter. I mean, I keep these in my belt. They're in my belt right now, stowed away for safekeeping. So if something should happen to my primary means of starting a, starting a fire or my secondary means of starting a fire or whatever, I've always got this. I, even if I've got a belt on, I always have a way to start a fire. And this is a very effective means of doing it. Uh, speaking of Wazoo, probably my preferred, my number one favorite store-bought fire starter is going to be these fire plugs right here. These things are the best. Uh, I've used lots of different store-bought fire starters and these I think have been the best so far because they are completely waterproof. I mean, they are amazing. You can soak this thing, test me, uh, challenge me. You could soak this thing in water for a week, longer probably, a month, maybe even a year. I don't know. You could have this in water for a long, long, long time. Pull the thing out and tear it apart and you will have fire, guaranteed. And I'll show you. And they float, which is kind of cool. So you could dip that in there, let it float around, soak it in the water. I could have that thing in there. As a matter of fact, I'll just leave it in the water until the end of this video, and then I'll light this one on fire. If you haven't hit the thumbs up already, do that. Dirty thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Exotac is another company that makes some pretty cool, innovative products. This one's called the Nano Spark. This one is pretty cool because of how small it is, and it's a very effective means of ignition. It's basically like a like a Zippo type sparker. It's got a tiny little ferro rod and a striking wheel. That puts off a pretty hot spark. However, you need a very high quality tinder to ignite, uh, to use this to ignite it. it. It won't work with any marginal or damp tinder. It's just not a big enough, hot enough spark. So there is that. But one of the really cool innovative things about this one is that you can always have at least one fire right there because inside of there you've got yourself a little fire starter this is a tinder tab i believe this product is called i'm not sure exactly who makes it but you can get them from exotech i'm pretty positive on that one and these ignite really really well 
and then you've got yourself some ignition. So always you have one fire for sure, guaranteed. And this thing's got a this thing's got a gasket in there, not a gasket, but a um, O-ring in there to keep it dry. So if this is in your pocket, buried down deep, pull that thing out of there. You're gonna have yourself a fire with at least one. We'll stick this one in the water with the one from the fire plug. Stick it in there with the fire plug from Wazoo, and we'll see if both of them will still be lightable after the, uh, the at the end of this video. Here's a couple of products, some cordages. And the cool thing about this one, this one's like 550 and this one's a little bit smaller, kind of, you know, like a big bank line maybe. Cool thing about these is that inside of them, if you pull out, pull off that outside sheath, you'll expose this red combustible tender material. Wrestle with it a little bit to get it out of there. There we go. So you pull off that red, that red fiber and you can still use this as cordage. You've got that red tender material inside the cordage and this one's more like 550 cord and it's got the same sort of deal it's got obviously more inner fibers it's got some the white fibers kind of like you'd find in paracord but if you pull that out the inner red strand is tender as well and you just fuzz up an end kind of like that it doesn't work well strike it'll light with a lighter very easily so you know without having to fuzz it up at all you could use this as an extender so you don't waste your lighter. So it lights up, both of them light up really, really easily like that. But if you want to be able to ignite it with a ferro rod, you're going to have to put in a little bit of effort and you're gonna to need to fuzz it up because they do not light well if you don't fuzz them up a little bit with some sort of scraper like this. So that will burn for a long time. Same thing with this one here. If you want to get it to light, you gotta fuzz it up a little bit. You fuzz it up and then you light it. And they burn pretty comparable, I would say. That is why on the back of the ON3 EDC, the knife that I designed, the one made by Bear Forced Knives, I've always got a little bit of tinder here. This is that same cordage right there on the back of the knife. Duct tape. You can never have too much duct tape, and that is a fact. This is also a good fire starting aid. While it is not that easy, despite what some people will say, that you can ignite this with a ferro rod. Yes, you can light it with a ferro rod, but it does take some coaxing. This is Gorilla Tape, and yes, you can fuzz it up. You can get it to ignite with a ferro rod, but it's not that easy. It does take some effort to try to get all these small little little fibers exposed to be able to get some ignition with your ferro rod. But it does light up at very well, just as is with a lighter. And it burns for a very, very long time. So duct tape is something that's basically, I would have to say an essential item to keep in your kit because it's just gonna be used for so many things from repairing gear to um, covering up blisters and boo-boos and using as makeshift bandages to obviously helping get your fire going. Just a small piece like this burns quite a long time. This is a great big inexpensive painter's drop cloth that you could buy from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever home improvement kind of store that you like to shop at. It's waterproof-ish because it's obviously made to put on the ground and protect your floor from paint spills and such. So it works really good for that. But this is a really good fire starter too. So whatever material that it's made out of, I don't know exactly what it's made out of. It, it, it lights really easily and it burns for a very long time. Here's a small piece right here. Tear it like that. And it exposes these very small, very small little hair like fibers. And those ignite pretty dang easy with your ferro rod or a lighter or whatever ignition source you choose to use. So the painter's drop cloth with very little processing and a tiny little ferro rod lights up fast and easy. It burns pretty quick. It's not as long lasting from what I can see right here as some of the other fire starters, but holy crap. I mean, that's a very effective fire starter right there. 
I mean, how many fires could you start with a giant drop cloth like this? Hundreds. I'd say hundreds of fires you could start with a big cloth like this. And they cost very, very little. So as far as cost effectiveness, man, it'd be it's hard to beat a big painter's drop cloth like that. Here's another really cool product from Wazoo. Listen, I'm I, I'm buddies with the guys from the owners from Wazoo. I'm friends with them, but I'm not promoting them because of that. It, they, I'm receiving no money from this. Nothing. I, I just they make some really cool products and they really care about the stuff that they do. They genuinely want their stuff to actually work. It's, it's not gimmicky. It's not none of that. It's none of that crap that you can find all over the internet. It's, it's stuff that actually works and you could trust your life to it. And that's, that's a really, really big deal. So, uh, Wazoo makes some really good stuff. If you haven't already looked into them, check them out. They're, they're good dudes, good, honest guys. And you will not be sorry about any of the stuff, but this is the Wazoo fire card. I think this is a fairly new product of theirs. I've, I've tried it out, obviously, but I have not tried it. I think I just lit the corner of it with my lighter to see how flammable it was. And I can show you that right now, I guess, without having to process it at all. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, that is super flammable. Holy crap. Look at that. <sighs> my goodness. That, that worked good. I mean, I only had the lighter on there for a second. So if you want to just make your lighter last a long time, you can pull this card out, boom, light the thing, and then put this in your, under your uh, your fire lay and get it going, and you could probably pull this out before you burnt it all up. Let's see what that does. That's just a tiny pile. I mean, I hardly scraped anything at all. Let's see what that does. Well, that was very effective. I mean, you only got to scrape a tiny little bit of it to get yourself to get the card itself to ignite and that thing burns like crazy <sighs> jeez <laughs> better do that outdoors the wazoo fire card same size as a credit card could put this in your wallet and you will always have a really awesome source of tinder that's a cool that's a really cool product right there i'm not sure if this is my favorite new fire starter but man that's it's up there. That, that's definitely worth keeping in your wallet for sure. Let's fish out our fire starters and see how effective they are. That's been in there for at least 20 minutes, I'd say. Fish them out of there. With minimal processing, I'm just going to tear it apart. Like that. Wow, yeah. That was easy. It was easy to ignite, but it didn't stay lit. Well, so that's that's something worth noting right there is it was easy very easy to ignite it but it did not stay lit it put itself out there it goes just spread it apart a little bit more pulled it apart let's see if it'll stay lit this time maybe with a little help Ah, crap. It went out again. I'll fuzz it up really good this time. See if it'll stay lit. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's try. Yeah, I think we can get it to burn all the way up. It needs a little help. Uh, maybe. Come on. Yeah, it's out again. All right, this is the fire plug from Wazoo. Uh, this one's been sitting out a little bit, so just so for fairness reasons, we're going to dip it back in the water and have it freshly in the water. And then all I'm going to do is tear it apart in the middle like this. And then we will light it up. One of them went out, the other one's still going. And all I did was tear that apart. I didn't process it at all, other than just ripping it apart. It was in the water for 20 minutes and then dunked again so it was freshly wet. I did not dry it off at all, just tore it in half and there you go. One of them went out, but I could easily light it probably with that. Listen to the water sizzling 
And these burn for a long time. I know for a fact that they burn a lot longer than these tinder tabs. 100%. These will burn for a long time. I rarely use a whole one to start a fire. Usually a half of one or even a third of one. I'll just cut it. I'll cut it up with this small little ceramic knife or my or my um, or my fixed blade or whatever, and uh, I'll just use it, what I need, just a small little piece because rarely will you need unless it's really really wet conditions. If it's super super damp conditions, then maybe you'll need a whole one to really have some dry time in there. But for the most part, half of one, even a third of one, is is more than enough, more than effective. And if you want to know what my favorite survival, you know, what really matters when your life is depending upon it, my favorite source of fire, that's going to be a flare. Not like this one. This is one that ejects. This is this is a launcher. I probably wouldn't recommend that, but a road flare. Those things will burn. I think some of them burn up to 20 minutes, maybe even longer, some of the bigger ones. You could just light one of those, throw it down in a mud puddle, and then start throwing stuff on it. Just randomness, anything. Any wet, soggy stuff that you throw on there is eventually going to light because they burn so hot and for so long, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, you you, you uh, elite, survival-y, bushcraft-y people out there might put your nose up to that. But let's say, you know, your life depends on it. You are going to freeze to death. You're wet. You were cold. You were injured. Your loved ones are in, in risk of dying of hypothermia. I don't think you're going to frown upon cheating a little bit. So in survival situations, a flare, not like this one, but a road flare, is a highly, highly effective. That's that that's something that I would definitely recommend having in your car, especially if you live in really cold climates. Keeping a few road flares in there, I mean, that could save your life for sure. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let me know what you think about this assortment of, assortment of fire starters. Let me know if there's some better ones out there. There very well could be. Leave that in the comments so we can all check it out and we can all learn, we can all benefit from it. Thumbs up. See you next time. Thanks, guys.